Hello and welcome to a Vox Commando tutorial. Today I will show you how to set up Vox Commando with the new configuration that we've created to allow control of J River Media Center. The first thing you need to do is to configure J River Media Center itself to allow control from an external application. So you need to go into Options, which is under the Tools menu, and you can also press Control O to get there. And then you want to go down through these categories to Media Network. And you want to enable Use Media Network to share this library and enable DLNA. When this is not enabled, you see that there are a bunch of categories that are missing here. When we enable it, we get these other options that show up here. You don't really need to change anything here. If you want to, you can enable authentication and then specify a username and password to use. I'll do that for the sake of the demonstration, but you don't really need to. And I'll just use test test for the purpose of the demo. Now that we've done this, the web service is operational and it's the web service that Vox Commando uses to actually control J River Media Center. Under this tab, we can click this link to actually open up the web service. Enter test test here. And we're now talking to J River through the web interface. So there's, for example, the play pause action that they provide here. Okay, so that's all we need to do here. If you want to, you can also go into advanced and either enable or disable DLNA servers and renderers, depending on whether or not you want to use them. I don't want to, I don't have any need for them personally, so I've disabled them just to save resources. By default, they're normally turned on when you enable this option. So we'll leave J River running in the background. And I'll close my web browser. Now you will need to have version 1.183 or later. This is the first version of Vox Commando that includes the updated plugin and the the updated J River plugin and the configuration, sort of the preset configuration for J River. Previous versions uh, have a bunch of preset configurations for other programs like XBMC and iTunes and whatnot, but not for JRiver. So I'll just go through this install. You pretty much just click next, agree, next. This will install it by default to whatever folder you launch the installer from, which is fine. And then when I click finish, it'll launch Vox Commando. So from here, you should read the EULA if, if you're interested in that, agree to it, and then go to the English configurations. Under English, you go into JRiver and say, use this configuration. And then Vox Commando will start up again. And the first time you run Vox Commando from a new location, it'll ask you to create a firewall exception, which you should do. And if your network is set up properly, then you're probably on a private network, so you only need to check private networks. If for some reason your network is set up as public, then you should either fix that, or you should enable access, uh, create a public network exception as well. So all of this is done. We have all of our um, commands now for JRiver are loaded in this configuration. And if I go to build voice menu, we can see a web page showing us all of the different phrases that we can use to control JRiver. But we do need to generate XML. This is the process of telling Vox Commando what's in your media library. So we go to the plugins and open up the JRiver settings. Here I'll also need to enter the username and password because I set up authentication in my JRiver settings. 
If you left authentication off, then you can leave these blank. Also, this is the default port. So if you haven't changed that in JRiver Media Center, you won't need to change it here. But if you have, then it should match whatever you've put there. So I'll put test test here, because that's what I used for authentication. I'll save my options. And then I'll click connect, which will do a test. And this works. So now we have a few buttons here that we can test. Let me just show JRiver in the background. You'll see when I move the volume here, it's communicating with JRiver and adjusting the volume, which you can see here and a notice up here as I move the volume. And if I go to audio and play something, I'll test something else here. Let's say this is uh, the, actually this action JRiver search play is one of the most crucial actions that we have in the Vox command on it. Let's just query JRiver and play anything that it finds. And we can also test our play pause. Next track. Next track. Previous track. Stop. I'll save options just to be safe here. Now, um, now that everything is set up, if your music has, if your media library has changed, if you deleted things or added new things, you can easily update the XML by going to Gen XML and clicking JRiver. It'll give you an update on your media that it found, and it'll rebuild the voice commands in the background. And now it's ready to go. So I can start using voice commands. Play artist James. Now playing songs by James. Next track. Play artist Claire Jenkins. Now playing songs by Claire Jenkins. What song is this? This is Nyctopi from the album Nyctopi by Claire Jenkins. Play song Gringo. Now playing song Gringo Blues. Music stop. So there you have it. Um, I've also created a demo and I'll link to that demo so that you can see more commands that we can use. That's all there is to setting it up. Uh, there is also a voice command if you want to update your, uh, your data, which is generate XML. That will rescan your library and update all your voice commands based on the content. The more songs you have, the longer it'll take. All done. Thanks for watching.